Hi everybody, it's Kathy. And I'm here with uh, a promised tutorial uh, for how to create a binding using the piano hinge method. Um, I showed a flip through of this simple journal on my Facebook group and there's some few people asked for a tutorial on how to do it. So that's what we're going to do today. It should take about 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, let's get started. Um, first of all, you see that the main part of the piano hinge is done with bamboo skewers and we cut notches. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. First, let's talk about materials. So you need two pieces of card stock and the card stock should measure six by eight and a quarter. I've already cut my card stock. And this is about a, I think a 80 pound card stock. Then you need 16 pieces of car, copy paper or journaling paper, whatever you use so that people can write on. Um, so it doesn't have to be as heavy as a card stock. 16 pieces measuring six by eight and a quarter as well. And I've already cut mine. I use parchment paper that I get off of Amazon. I kind of like it in case you're not going to do any coffee or tea dyeing. Then you need some twine or yarn, two pieces, and it could be uh, probably about a foot and a half long, maybe two feet long. You can also use yarn. You need scissors, a bone folder if you have one, not absolutely necessary, some sort of a clip, and you need bamboo skewers. You can buy these at an Asian market. I bought uh, about 100 for 95 cents, or they uh, sell them in your grocery stores as well for skewers for barbecuing or grilling. Um, let's see, this is optional, some ink to color the bamboo skewers. I'm using a uh, raspberry color today. It's not absolutely necessary. And you're also going to need to create this template. And let me go over the measurements of the template with you. The template is six inches in height. I made my template simply out of tracing paper. You could make it out of cardboard if you'd like. I didn't find it necessary to do that. So I just made it out of tracing paper. As I said, it's six feet high, six feet, six inches high, uh, which matches the height of the journal. And at each the top and the bottom of the template, there's a half an inch and a half an inch at the bottom. So it's a half inch, a notch, another 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 half inch, a notch. So there's five notches. And let me show you what I'm talking about when I say notches. These are these little V's that we cut into the paper. And that's what we pass the skewers through. Each notch is a V shape that's 3 eighths of an inch wide and 3 eighths of an inch deep. So five notches, 3 eighths of an inch wide, 3 eighths of an inch deep and a half inch in between each notch. And the easiest way to make a notch, I believe, if you're making your own, is to simply measure three eighths of an inch wide, then go to the middle of that three eighths of an inch, measure three eighths of an inch deep, and then draw the lines connecting the two perpendicular lines, and that will give you a V. 
okay? And then you, as I said, you want a half inch in between, half inch, and again, you have a notch that's three eighths of an inch. Find the center point, measure three eighths of an inch in, and that'll be your second uh, notch. That's the easiest way I found to do it um, in order to create your template. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to quickly color. Uh, I didn't quite finish coloring these skewers, so I'm going to finish coloring the last one. As I said, this is optional. It just gives a little dimension. I just take ink and I rub it on there. <laughs> of course, be sure to get it on your fingers because crafting with ink is never complete until you've done your fingers as well, which are very easy to do. I'll do this one a little bit more. So you wanna do that before you get started and let the skewers dry if you choose to color them. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our covers. That's the card stock. You have a front cover and a back cover. I'm going to take the cover and I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to use my bone folder. You don't have to have a very crisp line because your skewers are going to go in, but just make sure there's a nice fold. That's going to be the front cover. This is my back cover. And I'm going to take the papers. There are 16 papers that I asked you to cut at eight by six and at eight and a quarter by six inches. You want to group those journaling papers in groups of four. You're going to stack them on top of each other, fold them just the same way you did the covers. Use your bone folder. Voila. Now I've already done the cutting and the grouping of the other 12 papers, okay? So now I'm gonna take you through how to notch it. We'll start with the covers. And you know I'm going to put the covers together because it's not so thick. I'm going to put my template. The template goes on the folded edge. So here's my folded edge. I'm going to put the template on the folded edge. I'm going to stack the folded edges together. And then I'm going to clip, use my clip to clip the template in place. I'm only going to clip it on one side. So I'm going to hold it with my finger on the other. And I'm simply going to clip out the notches. Oh, what I failed to tell you when you're, um, when you're making a template is you don't have to worry. We said that it was six inches high. You don't have to worry about how wide it is as long as it's wider than your notches. So you can make an inch template. I just found it easier to hold. I didn't cut this quite enough. I find it easier to hold if I um, made it a little wider. <laughs> there we go. Well, actually not. That's because it's a little thicker than I gave it credit to be. And we're gonna cut that notch. Make sure you don't cut your hand like I almost just did. Nothing is worse than cutting yourself with your scissors. That's how they teach crafters a lesson. So I'm cutting out the five notches. Remember, that's what our skewers are going to pass through. Arr, I'll cut this better. I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. And this one. And this one. 
Okay, let me get that junk out of the way. So there we have our covers. We have a front cover and a back cover. And you'll notice each cover is double. And that's okay, that's exactly what we want. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the journaling paper. And remember, we're placing the notches on the folded end. And we're cutting out the notches. And notches. This is the, actually this is the third time I've made this, this type of hinge binding. Um, the second time I made it was when I was trying to make the first video. Actually, this would be the fourth time. Because my videos, something happened to the sound and it never worked out. I had trouble saving it. It was just not working for me. Okay, so that is the notches cut out on our grouping of four journaling papers, and they'll look like this, okay? So I have four stacks of four, which is a total of 16 papers and two covers. Let me get rid of this mess here, and we'll get started on placing the um, skewers in. I do wanna tell you that I didn't come up with this method myself. I'm sure it's on the YouTube, but I got this from a book called Handmade Decorative Books by Sue Rodis, R-O-D-D-I-S, and it's by Search Press. She has some wonderful ideas in here to give you inspiration. She certainly inspired me to make this type of journal. So we're going to continue. And this is the part that can get kind of tricky. So be patient with yourself. Put my skewers over here. I don't need my bone folder again and don't need my clip. Don't even need my scissors. So I'm going to take the front cover and I'm going to set it so that it looks like a tent. The folds are facing up towards me towards the, my face. And I'm gonna put my fingers inside. I'm going to do the exact same thing to the four pieces of journaling paper. I'm gonna set it like that. Then I'm going to take the journaling paper and put it alongside the cover. And I'm going to match up the notches so that it looks like this. Okay, you have the cover and you have the journaling paper, and I've matched the notches. Now what I do is I'm gonna put my fingers like this, which is easier for me. You'll find the way that you would like to do it. And I'm gonna put my thumb or my fingers right on top here to hold it in place. I'm going to take a skewer with the pointy end um, facing, it's facing my left but it's facing that way, you can see it. And I'm going to take the skewer and I'm going to slide it inside the cover, right here. I'm going to slide it in the cover and up and through the first set of pages, like this. Let's do it again. So I'm gonna take the skewer, I'm putting it inside the cover I'm coming up from the inside cover, up through the first notch, grabbing the papers, coming up through the second notch, just like that, and then I'm going to twist around and go back down through the cover only. So what I'm doing is I'm alternating cover, 
paper, cover, paper. So I'm going to come down. I'm going to grab the cover only. I'm going to come up through the third notch and just grab the paper only. I want to make sure I'm on the inside of the paper. I'm going to come up through the third notch. I've grabbed, whoops, I'm going to come up through the fourth notch. I've grabbed the paper. I'm going to go back down and grab the cover. And sometimes you have to finagle it. The nice thing about the bamboo skewer, it's very flexible. And you can always make sure it's lined up. Whoop, you know what I did? I did it so I missed the center. So I'm going to start again. You have to be careful to make sure you get all the papers. And somehow I didn't. So I've lined up my papers with my cover. I'm placing the skewer inside the cover up through the first notch. After I come up through the first notch, I'm going to grab the papers and come out of the second notch. I'm going to go back down and put the cover on the skewer, come back up, grab the papers, come out of the fourth notch, come back down and grab the cover. So I'm going from papers to cover to papers and out. And that's how we do the first skewer. You'll notice we didn't catch all of the paper. We only caught every other one because that's, we will catch those ones we missed when we add the next grouping of papers, okay? So we're going to take our second group of papers, and this time we're going to call this the second group, this is the first group, and this is the cover. So it's cover, first group, second group. That'll help you to remember that. I'm gonna open it up just like we did with the cover in the first group, and I'm going to line the second group of papers up with the first group. I want to make sure that I've opened it to the center to make sure I get all the papers. When we put the skewer in this time, we're not worried about the cover at all. We're not going to be working with the cover. We're only working with group number one and group number two. So we're taking a skewer in the same way. Through the first group of papers, we're going inside the first group, up through the second group, grabbing the papers, down through the first group, up through the second group, down through the first group, and towards the end it gets kind of tricky Helps if you open up the papers a little bit. Then up through the fifth, fifth notch. And then grab that last group. And that's how we do the second group. Again, it's alternating. And we're going to add our third group of papers. So that this time we're working with group number two, and three, we're not worried about the cover or group number one. So we're going to open group number three, three, line it up with group number two. Make sure the notches are aligned. And you take your skewer, you're always going inside of the group before. Make sure you have your fingers in the right place. You're going up through the first notch, over to the third group of papers, grabbing that, going back down through the second notch, grabbing that group of papers. 
going back to the third notch. And this is where it gets tricky. It's not as flexible as you start to put more skewers in, but it still works. Make sure when you put, the, put it in for the third group, you're grabbing all the papers because here's where your skewer will try to grab less than the full group of papers. And, whoa, oh, you know what I did? I broke my skewer. We're gonna add another one. We're going to go inside group number two, out the first notch, go over to group number three, grab the group of papers, make sure that you've got all the papers in your hand, up through the second notch, down to grab the papers, making sure you're grabbing all of the papers. Up through the third notch. If you have to open the papers, that's okay. Out through the fourth notch, grabbing the group of papers in the second group. And then we're going out of the final notch. In and out, in and out. And it might take you a while just to keep practicing to try it. Now we're taking our fourth group of papers and a skewer. Where does that skewer always go? In the previous group, inside the previous group. So we're going to match up our notches. We're going inside the previous group, up through notch one, grab the papers, out notch two, go on over and grab the papers of the previous group, up through notch three, over to notch four, grab the papers of the previous group, and up through notch five, and out. There you have all your papers in line. And here's where you might wanna, with your papers, make sure they're kind of lined up. Don't worry about the skewers not being aligned. We can do this, tap them on the end, uh, that'll help. Okay, now we're gonna take our back cover and we're going to do it the exact same way. We're going to put our fingers inside the previous papers and we're going to line up the notches. And the skewer goes where? Inside the previous, knot, previous papers. We're going to go up through one, over, grab the cover, down through two. Make sure you're grabbing all the papers. Over to three. And here's where it may help you to open it up a bit to make sure you're grabbing. Remember, it gets a little harder. There we go. Grab that cover. Come back. And I'm going to stick my fingers back in there. Grab all of the papers, making sure you're getting all of them. This is not wanting to do that. If I have to open it up a little, that helps. And up through the fifth notch, grab the cover, and voila. Okay. Now you have two more skewers. Let me get another skewer because I have one and a half skewers. So let me just put a little ink on here. Okay, and all you're doing with this last, these last two skewers, you're using them on the cover, so open the cover, either the front or the back. I'm gonna do the back, because that's where we were. 
and you're going to, with your skewer, grab the part, the notches of the cover that you missed. So we don't have a skewer in that first notch, so we're gonna go under, over, this is the easiest one to do, and you're just gonna alternate, making sure all of the notches get grabbed for your cover. And that's all we do on that side. And you'll notice that the notch was grabbed by our last skewer, but it was grabbed by the previous one before, etc. We're going to turn over to the cover and we're going to do the exact same thing. Up through the first, down through the second, up third, down fourth, up fifth, and out. There you go. And you'll notice on the cover, um, cover, whoops, I had a couple of them. Up, oh, I have this one upside down. I'm gonna just do it over very quickly. So all the pointy ends are together. Up, down, up, down, up, down, and out. Okay. And you'll notice on your cover, your skewer for the last one, for the covers, come out. Now, here you have a choice. Maybe you don't want the pointy ends. You know, on the, the one that I did, I cut off my pointy ends with the scissors. You don't have to, but you may. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is we're going to glue the cover. You wanna stay away from the notches. I forgot to tell you to have glue out, but uh, you do need some glue. Eh, it's not fancy. You just do that, make sure it's lined up, and um, it lines up pretty evenly. Each time I've made it, I haven't had to fuss with it. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do in making it is we're going to add our yarn. And remember those, those loom uh, pot holders you made in elementary school or kindergarten? It's kind of similar to that. So we're going to take our yarn, it was about a foot and a half or two feet, or this happens to be twine, colored twine. I'm going to leave a tail, and I'm simply going to weave it in and out of the skewers. So over, under the next one, over, under the next one, over, under, get it really tight, and you can push it down. Then you're gonna repeat that. And just keep going back and forth, weaving it as you go through. Whoops. And we're gonna go back again. And I would recommend doing this about four or five times. This is our third time. Go back around, push it down and pull it tight. And you want to make it long enough. Whoop, let me, let me straighten this one out. You wanna make the yarn long enough so that, I messed that up here. Um, it meets back where you started. Okay, and I think I can go one more time up and back. 
hopefully. Got off track there for a minute. Back. And then all you're going to do at the end, I should have left a little longer tail, maybe leave at least a two inch tail. Although as long as you can, you can knot it. And then you're just going to do a double knot. Now you also have the option here, you're going to cut it off. You also have the option here of, I don't know if you can see that, of adding some beads to it. You'll notice on the one I initially made is I added a bulb pin with some beads on it. And it gives it a nice touch. You're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. What you wanna do before you do that is give them a tap to line up your skewers. Cause as you put the yarn on, they get a little, it gets a little tighter and you won't be able to do it as easily. So I'm going to leave a tail and I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'll try to do it a little faster. I'm going to pull it, wrap it around, making sure my skewers don't get jumbled in the meantime. A journal like this, you know, without the embellishments, you know, will probably take you about 30 minutes after you, um, after you know what you're doing. It'll probably even take less than that if you prep all your papers first, etc. And we're gonna go back through. And almost done. Okie doke. And you can go as high up on the skewers as you'd like. It actually would be pretty if you probably did um, seven or eight of these. I want to try doing this with a larger journal. So I have to, I'm going to see if I can find any longer skewers. You can use skewers, you can use chopsticks, uh, but I found that skewers obviously are the most inexpensive. Okay. And you'll notice it lays pretty flat. And you can decorate these. Um, I would recommend, you can decorate these any way you'd like, but I would recommend always placing another piece of cardstock as I did here. It just gives the um, cover a little more st uh, sturdiness. But as you can see, I embellished it a bit, not too much. And just have fun with it. It was a lot of fun to make. And I hope you learned something and uh, we'll try to do this. If you do, I would love to see what you came up with in the comments. It would be great if you had like a feather and did like a um, Native American style. I think that would be pretty cool. Anyway, you all have a great day and thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye.